Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is probably going to be one of the shortest I've done in quite some time. Um, we are going to get on the computer and we are going to look at Insta360 uh, video and how you can edit it basically in Premiere Pro, but I am going to take a little bit different approach. I'm not going to make this super long video, I'm not going to get into a lot of details. This is just basically six quick and easy steps to go from recording video on the Insta360 to editing in Premiere Pro. So without further ado, let's hop on the computer. Okay, step number one is not technically on the computer. First, you gotta get on your Insta360 device. So turn that guy on. Uh, you're gonna swipe down from the top, then swipe left Click on the settings icon, go to general, click on the USB mode, click on desktop mode. That allows you to connect the Insta360 to your computer. So don't be like me, don't read, uh, who doesn't read the directions, just plugs this thing in and it kept shutting down and that's the step you've gotta do first before you're able to download files from the Insta360. So I'm gonna pop that on the screen. Make sure your Insta360 is set to desktop mode. All right, we're back on the computer now. Um, we are going to go to the insta360.com website uh, for both of these next two steps. So you're gonna go to the Insta360 website, you're under product, Insta360 1X2. You're gonna go to downloads. And under Insta360 1X2, go to downloads again. And you want to go to the Insta360 Studio 2021 and download that. Okay, apparently my battery died about halfway through the video and I didn't realize it. So step number three, you need to go to the third party software on the Insta360 site. So we are going to navigate down to third party software, then click on the GoPro FX Reframe plugin and we are going to download the Reframe plugin. Okay, step number four. We are going to go and open up Insta360 Studio, and we are going to select one of the files that we downloaded. I have already put several of them in here, so I am going to open, actually, let's go to video. Uh, Insta360 First Impressions video, Insta360 raw, outside on the trail, and let's open one of those, those guys. All right, so you see that I have opened up one of the videos that I recently uh, showed in the last video, one of the Insta360 videos, and I'm just gonna pause that. And all you really need to do is go up here to this upper right-hand corner of the video, or uh, sorry, of the Insta360 Studio. Click on that little yellow download button and you can specify the resolution that you want to export your file in. Um, this is defaulted to the 5.7K at 30 frames per second. Um, I decided to change this myself to 2160 by 4320, so more of a 4K type of resolution. Um, you can specify the encoding format. Um, I would pr uh, probably say that H.264 is your best option. But if you prefer H.265, that is another option as well if you want to kind of compress that file a little bit. Um, I have done that with my footage, so I went ahead and compressed that. You can specify where you want to output that file and the file path. And that's it, really. All right, we are on step five. Uh, you're going to open up Premiere Pro, uh, create a project. Um, I have gone ahead and created some bins here. I went ahead and created the default sequence. So all you really need to do now is take that video that you just exported from Insta360 Studio and import that guy. So I'm doing that now, importing the video. And I am going to take this one here that I called Bid Trail. I'm gonna open that. And you see that's been imported into Premiere Pro. I'm going to take that, I'm just gonna drag it on the timeline. And I'm gonna keep the existing settings for now. And if you look at the footage here on, in Premiere Pro, you'll notice it looks a little warped, it looks a little strange. So this is where our plugin comes into play. So you're just gonna type in under effects, so just click on effects up above, and in the right-hand corner there, at least for my 
set up in Premiere Pro, you're just going to type in FX and you'll see the GoPro FX reframe. You're going to take that GoPro FX reframe. If you don't see that, then something happened incorrectly when you did the install of the plugin. So you're just going to take that and drag that down onto your footage. And you see that I've dragged that there. And you'll see um, kind of the effect controls on the left hand side here in Premiere Pro. So there's a couple of things that you're going to want to do here. So you've already done that. So that ends step number five. Now we're going to move on to step number six. So if you look on your left hand side under effect controls, so if you're clicked on effects there still, you should see the effect controls here. And you see that when we drop that GoPro FX reframe onto the video footage, you see that it defaults it under projection to 16 by 9, which is just HD 19 by 20 1080. So I'm going to change that to the GoPro 4K 16 by 9 right here. So you see that it kind of expands out our screen. And one thing you probably want to do, at least in mine, it defaults to the scale to 88.9. You're going to want to probably bump that up to 100. So I'm just changing the scale, bumping that up to 100. Yep. See, that's now filled the screen. You don't have to use 100 if you want to expand whatever you're seeing in the, in the screen there. Uh, you can go a little bit farther than that. And now we're just gonna play around with the pan, the tilt, the rotate, and I don't, I don't do much with the lens curve. Um, you can also do a little bit with the zoom if you wanna zoom into your footage there a bit. Just to kind of show you, if you rotate your little, um, I don't even know what to call that. <laughs> this is the rotate the little item left or right here you'll see when you pan um, what you're seeing in the image you can go all like I said since this is 360 degree imagery you can go all the way around 360 so whatever um, view that you would like to see in the footage that's what you would you would do, use your pan option for so let's just say that I want to look forward for now so tilt you'll see that it's kind of up and down which makes sense right so obviously with a 360 degree footage if you wanted to see the sky um, all the way down to the ground you've got that option it's captured that in your imagery so you'll see that there in tilt um, I personally don't think you need to use rotate that much, but it depends on what you're trying to accomplish. So we'll just kind of show what rotate will do. See that rotates left or right, of course. Um, and if you are someone that's prone to getting nauseous very quickly, you'll see <laughs> that would certainly make me nauseous. And then lens curve, you can kind of see if I play around with that, you'll see that it kind of modifies the, the curvature of the frame. So if you go all the way up to like I'm at 62 right here, see how that kind of changes the curvature and you can kind of take that curvature back down depending upon what type of view that you would like to see now if you want to change the the view the perspective of the video as you're looking at it then you want you're going to want to start using keyframes and i'm not going to get into keyframes right now but um, if you want to change it as you're going through the video itself when you're doing the editing you're like look i want to see a different perspective at say two minutes into the video um, you're gonna have to keyframe that. So lots of videos out there on keyframing, so I don't wanna extend this video to 15 minutes to start getting into how you would do keyframes. But So that's it really. Hopefully that's helpful. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, and we'll talk to you soon.